Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. In this unit, I'm going to talk about the F distribution and the F test. Well, the F distribution, we only use in very rare cases explicitly. However, if you just want to get some values for the F distribution, you can simply start with F, dist, and then here, first off, enter the testing value, the degrees of freedom, the second degrees of freedom, so for the first part, the second part, and then you get the corresponding probability. So for example, if we were to use this in the context of a regression analysis, I got an F statistic of, let's say, 4 for the first part is the smaller part, so that's number of um, independent variables. So let's say here I have two independent variables. I have 103 observations, so my degrees of freedom 2 is 103 minus the two degrees of freedom 1 minus 1. And in this case, I'm going to use a cumulative distribution function. Uh, sorry. Not a cumulative one, in this case the probability density function, giving me here a probability of 0, 0.0, let's say 2%. This is smaller than 5%. So I can reject the H0 hypothesis if this was from, um, as I said, regression analysis. I can reject the H0 hypothesis that all of the coefficients at the same time are zero. So in this case, I can, could assume that my regression model actually has explanatory power. So that's basically what is reported if you use a statistics program and take a look at the corresponding significance level for the F-test. He will use here the score he calculated and this is the corresponding significance level. Well, usually you don't get the significance level this way. You could do this to, well, expand on what you calculated by hand. But, well, what is more interesting is a different option this way offers. And that's actually if I go with f dot. Well, first off, I see here I can also use the inverse f distribution, so to get some critical values for my tests, or I can use an f test. The f test is pretty neat if I want to compare variances. So if I have two data series, as here on the left, I can select the first one and the second one and the F test will test whether they have the same variance, the two samples. Close this. So here I get a value of 0 0.88. So meaning I have to retain my H0 hypothesis. The H0 in this context is they have the same variance. So equality always is the H0 with these tests. Inequality is the H1. So here in the first one, all parameters equal to 0 were H0. All parameters, or at least one parameter, different from 0, that's the H1. Here, variance is equal, H0. Variance is different, H1. So here, this is larger than 5%. Or, well, it's pretty high, higher than 5%, higher than 1%. So whatever margin of error you set, this supposedly is larger. So we have to retain the H0 hypothesis. So both samples have more or less identical or similar variances. Well, let's check this. Let's calculate the variance. Let's do the corrected one for the first one and then do the same thing 
for the right one. And well, we see here, they are pretty similar. So it doesn't surprise that we get here. All the differences could also be from random fluctuations. And well, that's then already all there is to using the F distribution in Excel. So we could use this either to run our own or get our own significance levels if we already know something about the corresponding testing value, so the F-test statistic. We could do the opposite if we want to get critical values by using F and then inverse. So here I would have to insert the probability and the degrees of freedom. Or I can use an F-test to compare variances in different samples. That's, for example, useful not only by itself, but also, for example, as a preparation for the t-test. So if ever you use a bit more sophisticated statistics program, they usually first run an F-test like this, in some cases called the Levine test, which tests if both samples have the same variance. And then, depending on whether they have the same variance or different variances, different other methodologies are used. Same thing is done as well for variance analysis. There also, first you have to check same variances in all groups or different ones. And depending on this, you can use corresponding methods to continue with your analysis. Well, that's what this F-test here is for. Well, this then concludes the session on the F-test and the F-distribution. And I hope you enjoyed listening to it. And if you want to see additional input on Excel or statistics in Excel, feel free to visit the rest of this course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I'll say goodbye and see you next time.